story of this road actually goes back to the 1960s when a proposal was made that there should be a bypass on the southern side of Inverness to take the traffic out of the centre of the town. And to be honest, that's the only place you can put a bypass in Inverness, because if you look at the map there, there isn't really anywhere else uh, to put a, a, a road that would um, uh, circle the, the town. I've drawn in roughly the line of the Southern Distributor Road here on a map dated 1961. Um, I don't know whether this was the original line um, identified for the road, but this is approximately the line of the road that we've now got. Um, and uh, I don't know at that stage whether they'd thought of the problem of the river and the canal. Um, but uh, we've, uh, that problem has been solved in a sort of a way um, by, the, by the current planners. Um, by 1996, two sections of, road, of this road had been put in place. Uh, the, um, the section between Inches Roundabout and Wade's Roundabout at Old Edinburgh Road and the section between Strotheric Road and, and Doors Road. Um, and that was really all that had happened by 1996. Um, I do, I, it was rather like the Keswick Bridge, which was spoken about for 50 years before they finally bridged the, the Narrows. Um, I think people spoke about it a lot and didn't do very much. Um, by this time, you see that the town had expanded considerably uh, and that we've, we've got um, the Kalkebuk and Drakey's estate here, um, Hilton estate here, Lochardo here, home here, and therefore the town really had reached out to the area where the road was going to go. Um, I'm not so sure it can be called a bypass now because it's surrounded by housing. Does that make it a bypass? I don't know. Um, but of course, this opened up a lot of ground for development. And Jim was clearly very interested in all the development around this road because we have hundreds of photographs of what was going on uh, and he was very much um, uh, recording um, what was going on sometimes in quite great detail. Um, when the, the idea was revisited, the plan was to bypass the Inches roundabout. This is this roundabout here. Um, that has to be the worst roundabout in the entire universe, but we haven't heard anything about, a by, about putting a new roundabout in to provide access from the A9 uh, to the Southern Distributor Road. And that's probably because I think they built Inches Primary School on the site that they are earmarked for the roundabout. Um, so I don't think there's anywhere to put it now. Um, but anyway, um, that was going to go ahead. Originally, this was a trunk road and it was going to be paid for by the Scottish government. Um, in 2008, that option was cancelled and the word, the, the gossip about that was that it was cancelled because it had too many roundabouts on it and it therefore could not be classified as a trunk road and therefore became the responsibility for payment of the local authority. I don't know how true that is, but there are certainly an awful lot of roundabouts on this road. Um, there are nine roundabouts between Inches and Home, and a further four or five, depending on how you count them, on the West Link. And this makes it really quite irritating to drive but it's ideal for a talk like this because I'm going to roundabout hop from Inches to Tom Nahuri and look at the different sections of road and what was happening in, in the different sections. Can I just start, where's my cursor? There it is. I'm just going to start with this little bit of road here between the A9 and Inches roundabout. This is um, really just an access road uh, to get traffic from the A9 to the Southern Distributor Road. Um, this isn't one of Jim's photographs. This is a, a photograph of phase two of Reedmore Hospital uh, taken in the early 1980s. And you'll see what the area was like at that time. This is the edge of the town here. Um, out here, here be dragons out here. This is, this is all countryside. Beechwood 
is this area here, which was going to become Beechwood Business Park. Inches up here, which was going to become the Inches Retail Park. And really the only sign of development is the police station, which was opened in 1975 um, and was built in this, at that time, out of town site. Um, so that's, uh, that's what the area was like when development started. Um, and this is, just a minute, I'm going to have to, I've got people down the side here. How do I get rid of all, the, all these little windows? Um, should be a minimum size. That's, it. that's okay, I've got it, that's fine. Uh, this is um, 1989 of one of Jim's photographs and it shows you the access road from the A9 under construction and Inchies Roundabout is also under construction there. But it's still pretty much a green field um, that, that we've got there. By 2014, this is what the area looked like. Um, the Beechwood Park is pretty much complete with uh, travel lodges and offices, and this is life scan here, um, and um, Inches Roundabout there, um, and now, of course, the university on the other side of the A9. Um, as Roland suggested, there's, there's a possibility of, of finding archeology span when there's development, and um, I was quite, interested to see what we could find and I'm absolutely astonished at how little there is in this area. If you think about what we discovered over at Kulduthal, um, there's practically nothing in this area. Um, the only thing of interest, um, well there were watching briefs carried out in 1994 by somebody called Jonathan Wordsworth, don't know if you've heard of him, and perhaps Jonathan can explain why there aren't so many uh, more archaeological sites in this area. The only one that seems to be um, noted in the HER is at the Bingle Hall, which was opened in 2006. And this was a possible oven and eight pits with some uh, prehistoric remains. So I, I don't really know why there's so little. I've lost my cursor again, there it is. Um, but that's all that there seems to have been in the Beechwood area. I'm going to move on now to the Inches Roundabout, uh, to Inches Road Roundabout, this little bit of road here. And this is uh, dated 1994, um, this, um, this slide. You can see that uh, um, with respect to the access road there, it's complete, Inches Roundabout is complete and the um, business park is, is under construction. Um, by 1990, uh, 1994, when this slide was, was taken, the first part of the Inches Retail Park had been constructed here. Uh, this was um, a co-op superstore, a focused DIY store, and what everyone wants. And that became Toys R Us when what everyone wants closed. And then later the co-op sold their supermarket and um, Tesco swooped in to buy it in order to prevent Asda from getting a foothold, foothold in Inverness. Um, so that was what the retail park looked like at that stage. And it was being extended that year with the second phase. And this is the area that has Matalan and Hobbycraft and McDonald's, I think, is there, um, B&M, Ballantine, is it Ballantine's um, gym? Um, Aldi's in here and there's various other um, units up here. But you can see that behind uh, the retail park here, the, there's not a lot of development in 1994. Um, and this is what it looks like, looked like in 2014. Um, you've got the retail park here, the development at Inches here, Inches Primary School here, and um, the development at Kalkabuk and Drakey's down on, uh, on, on the other side of the Southern Distributor Road. Um, not a lot was found in that area either when it was being developed, but then that was developed in the 70s and 80s and perhaps they weren't looking for things. Um, the 
police station, which was built at Inches and opened in 1975, it was replaced with a modern building, which was built behind um, the old police station, and that was then demolished and turned into the car park. And there aren't many sites of archaeological interest that are in the record here either. Um, the remains of a roundhouse was uh, found at Della Vinci's. Um, there were a few flints and uh, ceramic sherds found behind the police station, but that's it. And I really don't understand why so little has been found over in this, in this area. Uh, we're going to move on now from Inchy's Road Roundabout to Wade's Roundabout, um, which is this roundabout here um, at the top of Old Edinburgh Road. This map is, this picture is dated 1996 and was as far as the Southern Distributor Road went at that time. Um, you, there are some sites of interest in the area, uh, but the only thing on this northern side of the road was, um, I think it was a, um, I think it was an enclosure which was destroyed uh, by buildings. So um, that has gone. We have the line of the military road going down to Edinburgh, down south, and you can see the line of the that the Southern Distributor Road will take once it is actually built. Um, Stevenson Road, which is this development here, I had no idea this development went back as far as 1996. Um, Stevenson Road curves around here and will eventually uh, link up with Inches Road somewhere out of picture. Um, and uh, you can see that there's yet another roundabout going to go in there. Inverness does a, does a job lot in roundabouts. Um, by 2012, Stevenson Road had been um, extended to join. This is Inches Road coming down here. There's another roundabout uh, where, where they join. Um, this is Milton of Lees, about which there is a whole other story. Um, very early development there, which was stopped with uh, when the, the guy who owned the land went bankrupt. Um, and this is the Millburn, which runs down past the, what was the distillery at Milburn and out into the Firth at the Longman. Um, and again, there's not a lot of archeology span that was found in the course of all this development. An interesting site was recorded at Glendruy here um, in 1976, but when the area was stripped for, uh, for development in 1991, nothing could be identified there. Uh, so, in all this area of farmland, probably quite heavily farmed, um, we haven't found an awful lot of archaeology. Um, going to move on from Wade's Roundabout, oops, didn't mean to do that, um, Wade's Roundabout up here to Fairway's Roundabout, which is down off the end of the picture here. Um, and uh, Despite the fact that the Southern Distributor Road didn't go any further than this, there was development on the southern edges of the town uh, at Castle Heather and Castle Heather Avenue, um, and also at Fairways here, where a golf driving range and facilities was built, um, developed by the, the professional at Kilcabot Golf Course. And a new golf course was also um, uh, um, built around the area there. Um, the Fairways building also had an indoor bowling um, centre here um, developed there. Um, there's, um, I'm just trying to see, yes there's, there's kind of fairly recent news, I came, I stumbled across some recent news about this area uh, in the paper um, and it seems that the golf course has been losing members and has not been making money, so it's been closed and Tullock have applied to build 800 houses on this site. Um, uh, the, it's been called in for consideration because of the loss of green spaces. 
Um, when, when the Southern Distributor Road wasn't in place, access to fairways was via Slack Buoy Avenue, which is this area here, and that's fairways there. Um, so it's, th there, there was access from the town um, before the, the main road went in. And this is what the area looked like in 2012. Uh, you've got um, building at Castle Heather Farm. Um, you've got building at um, Slack Buoy Way, which was uh, um, about around 2004. Um, there's development at Fairways, with more units put in, including a travel lodge. Um, and you can see the area of the golf course that Tullock want to build on. Um, it's really quite sad, actually. And all of this development, of course, attracted archaeological investigation. There are a number of sites, again, perhaps not as many as we might expect, but um, here we go. Um, that's the site of Castle Heather, uh, which was a mo it's in the record as a moated homestead. Um, it was visited in 1943 when it was reported that there is nothing of interest to be seen except the remains of a ditch. And in 1994, Jonathan reported that no trace of defensive ditches was found and the monument is now so truncated as to be considered destroyed. At low um, ahead of development in 1994 and 2004, uh, prehistoric remains were uncovered and further evaluation in 2006 uncovered evidence of medieval and early modern cultivation. Um, a ring ditch was first noted in aerial photographs in 1989 behind the site where Fairways is. And at Boulogne, on the northern side of the road, this area here, this is the area of Boulogne House and Farm, there are several sites in the record added uh, because of the development in the area of Boulogne Farm here. Um, these included some prehistoric sites which are excavated in 2001 and also the remains of the farm and, and the house. This steading is now called Kilduffel Court and I don't understand why it's not called Boulogne Court because it was Boulogne Farm but there you go. Um, from Fairways now round to Lees, we're going to jump over this little roundabout here and go round to Lees roundabout. And this is what the area looked like before the road went through. Uh, you can see uh, how heavily agricultural it was. At the, when this photograph was taken in 1994, the golf course was in process of being laid out. Um, but essentially, this is still countryside. Um, by 1990, Rollerball had been built on a site on, on uh, Slack Buoy Avenue. And in 2007, the Gaelic Primary School moved into this custom-made building from its accommodation at Central Primary School, where it was established in 1992. Um, another roundabout was built to provide access to the primary school and also to the ASDA Superstore, which uh, was in process of being built. Jim recorded the site um, for ASDA in 2010, I think it was. And by 2012, we had our ASDA Superstore at long last, despite Tesco making every effort possible uh, to keep ASDA out. Um, at the other end of this section is the Lees roundabout. This is it under construction in 1996. Um, and there's comparatively little development on the northern um, side of the road. Uh, there's the houses at West Heather Road and um, uh, I think it's West Heather Road. Um, and um, the, um, I've lost a page here. Um, yeah. Um, the other side of the road, however, oh, oh what's that? That's uh, yes, that's the, the the this is the the development on the which is largely green area, 
to be fair, Inverness has left a wee bit of green there. But on the other side of the road, it's quite busy with little huddles of houses. And um, it, the, in this area, there were a number of sites that, that came up with prehistoric settlement. Um, there was prehistoric settlement at Lower Slack Bui behind Asda, and also off the picture to the left there. Um, Lower Slack Bui Farm was still in existence in 2008, a 19th century farm steading, but was pretty quickly demolished and replaced by building. Remains of a pond, possibly related to a nearby sawmill, and Caldutthal Smiddy uh, was in this area there. Um, so that's the area behind ASDA. There's quite a lot of green space to be fair to Inverness, but if the, the golf course is covered with 800 houses, it's going to make a huge difference to the look of this whole area. At Lee's roundabout, um, we have the new Inverness Royal Academy building, um, which was a very early development. Um, the Inverness Royal Academy was relocated in 1977 to this building at Kildutthal. This is rollerball here. Um, and by, um, by 2013, um, a lot of huts had been added because the school roll kept going up. Um, also, I think there was some problem with the building uh, with uh, leaks and rainwater getting in. Uh, it was, after all, a flat roof building and we do live in Scotland. Um, and so a new academy building was constructed in the playing fields here of the original building. This picture here was taken in uh, 2016, uh, just before the academy um, uh, um, was opened. The uh, pupils um, started going to this new building in August of 2016, and the original, this older building, uh, was demolished and the, the area turned into playing fields. I could make a comment about the 19th century building at Mid Mill still standing and the 1977 building at Kildutthal having to be demolished, but I won't say anything about that. Um, by, uh, by 2016, this, this building was up and running and, and, and it seems to have um, at least addressed uh, the problem for the meantime. Before we move on um, from this, I want you to notice Kaldatho House, which is down here at the bottom of the picture. Uh, this is the only part of the hospital which um, survived the closure of the hospital. The pavilions and um, were demolished and replaced by housing, and Kaldatho House itself was flatted. And while they were building the original IRA building on this site, um, they came across a beaker burial in, in this corner of the site. Um, this is the other side of that section of road. And this is the wonderful site of Kaldutthal where um, so much was found. I seem to remember we had a talk from AOC about um, what, the, what this area looked like. Um, but this is Jim's photograph taken in 2010. Um, this is the area of Kildutho Farm. An early discovery of a Bronze Age kist was uncovered in 1928, and the dig took place between 2001 and 2007, and covering a complex Bronze Age and Iron Age landscape, which included evidence of metalworking and glassworking. And that was noted as the first secure evidence of Iron Age glass working from any Scottish site. Um, excavations also uncovered evidence of occupation in the Neolithic and some post medieval remains. Uh, so it was a very, very rich archaeological site in comparison with the comparative dearth that we had over at Inches, uh, which is what I just don't understand. Um, before we move on, I'm going to point out off picture here is the, I, I, I was going to say this, the original site of the Boar Stone, which is now in the county buildings, 
but I don't know whether that was the original site. That's where it was when I first came to Inverness. It was on a single track road at a right hand turn on the corner and there was no way that you could stop safely and go and have a look at it. So it's probably better where it is in the council buildings now. Um, this is the Essex roundabout here and we're going to go down from here to the Doors Road. This is the Doors Road here. Um, and this little bit of road, which was um, upgraded um, uh, as part of the Southern Distributor Road project, uh, was an ori originally just a, a local road that came down from Kulduthal. And um, uh, it, was, um, it was just amalgamated into the line of the um, Southern Distributor Road. By 2003, a roundabout had been put in at the Doors Road to provide access to the West Link, which is going to go around that way, and also access to another supermarket, which was going to be built in this field. Um, and housing was developed really uh, from this time, uh, along the Essex Road rather than on the other side. This was the Stratheric Road development, which must have been about 1980, 1990. Home, of course, was built in the 1980s, I think. Um, nothing, there's absolutely nothing in the home, in the archeological record for ho the home area. Um, if I can just go back to that, this, this lot of houses here. Um, it's, there's no records of any archaeology found in the development of that estate. Uh, and I don't think there's terribly much in the Stratheric estate either, uh, in, the, in that estate either. But on this, this housing here has, has thrown up some interesting archaeological sites. We've got the site of Home House Mott among the trees here. Um, excavations at Home Mains uncovered Bronze Age remains. Excavations at Kulduthal Mains uncovered remains from both prehistoric and more modern times. Home Mains Farm in 2003, uh, two Bronze Age kists were excavated and there are remains and features associated uh, with Home House there. This is the home burn running down this way. Um, in addition, in this area, a section of Stratheric Road and Essex Road there is on the line of the 1726 Wade Road and a section of the Doors Road follows the line of the 1732 Wade Road. And that's the end of the Southern Distributor Road. Um, we now have to move on to the West Link, which, which links up, uh, the, makes the final connection between the A9 and the A82. Um, it um, loops round this little bulge of land um, on the, beside the river. And the main problem here is what do you do about crossing the canal and the river? Um, one of the suggestions inevitably was a tunnel. Um, but I think that, provided, that came in at just too expensive for the Highland Council. So instead they've um, come up with an ingenious solution to the problem of the swing bridge at Tom Nahuri, which used to hold up the traffic when it was open to let canal traffic through. So they're now going to put a new swing bridge, a second swing bridge, so that when one of the swing bridges is open, the other one will be closed and the traffic can continue uh, to move west without having to uh, uh, stack up on Glen Glenarcourt Road. It remains to be seen whether that will actually work the way it is intended to work. Um, this view was taken in 1996 and you can see this huge area of, uh, of the, the riverside which is now going to be built uh, up with lots and lots and lots of houses. The, the, how the building has started already. Um, the roundabout at Doors Road uh, in 2012 uh, this is this is the roundabout. The supermarket has been built and is in use by this time. Tesco again swooped in and bought this site ahead of ASDA in order to try and prevent ASDA. Um, but 
since that made for four Tesco's in Inverness, I think the council decided that that was enough and, and allocated the, the earlier site that we looked at um, to, to ASDA. Um, and that's the new supermarket in place. Oops, back. And this is what the road looked like in 2012. Um, no, it wasn't, it was later than that. Um, 2016, uh, you've got the Doors Road roundabout here coming round to yet another roundabout, and it's sweeping round along the, the riverside. It, there's another roundabout up off picture, and uh, you, uh, you've got a bridge uh, across the river. If we go back to 2008, um, this is the area where the bridge will cross the river, and this is what it looked like in 2008. There's a cement factory and grazed timber on the left. Um, the cement factory had been empty and rather derelict for at least 20 years, I think, possibly even longer. Um, and on the right hand side, we've got Home Mills, which was the Pringle Mills opened in, 19, in, the, 19, in the 1770s, I beg your pardon, by James Pringle from Brora. It was bought by the Edinburgh Wool Company in 1989 and became Home Mills Shopping Village. I don't know if anybody remembers Cafe Facet, who was a, a quite well known in the 80s. He was a knitter and a, a knitting designer. And he discovered the Pringle Mills one day and raved about the wonderful wool uh, that was produced in the Pringle Mills in Inverness. Um, I'm not terribly sure what he would think of the home mills shopping village now, because I don't think they've produced wool for a very long time. By 2016, the river crossing was getting underway. And by 2017, the deck of the bridge was in place. You can see here, the cement factory is in the process of being demolished. Grace timber has already been demolished. Going back to um, 2004, Canal Park, the, the, the other side of the bridge over the river, the road runs, skirts the, the canal here, runs around this area here. Um, and you can see that the rugby club was in the way. Um, the rugby, but the bonus was that it got a nice new pavilion uh, built for it. And this is what the area looked like in 2016. Another roundabout, which was going to give access to the the new swing bridge, which will go over about there somewhere. Now that's as far as Jim's photographs can take us. I don't have any uh, of, of this development um, after 2016. But I discovered, I came across uh, an aerial view that was published in the Highland Times in 2019 of the work at that time. And this, uh, you can see the, the road has been completed on the, um, on the uh, canal uh, park side of the canal, note the rugby club um, pavilion, lovely new pavilion, and they're now working on uh, the Turvain side. And Mary gave us a wonderful talk about the um, the discoveries on both the canal park and the Turvain site. Um, and this, oops, sorry, this is what um, was put in the document for calling in the tenders for this section of the road. You can see that this is the theory behind it. This is the second swing bridge with its access roundabout going over to a big roundabout on the um, western side of the canal and that's the roundabout at the bottom of Tom Nahurich. Um, and when this, this, gate, this bridge is open then the traffic will be routed round here and onto this other bridge. We'll see if it works. Um, archaeologically, um, Mary has Mary gave us that wonderful talk, as I said, on Torvane and the Canal Park excavations. They're not in the record yet. I'm assuming that um, they're waiting for the reports to be submitted. Um, but there's certainly a lot of archaeology in this area. 
A number of test pits were put in in the original line of the road, along the line of the road, and they didn't come up with terribly much, apparently, although that may be the nature of test pits. You just need to be a few inches off and you miss it. But hopefully there will be somebody who recognises that this area possibly has a lot of archaeology in it, and somebody will be watching the diggers as they dig the foundations of the houses which are beginning to be built in this area here and will soon cover all of this area. Um, Jim has provided us with so many wonderful photographs of, of this area and I'm just going to indulge myself by showing you three um, final pictures uh, which shows you what the area was like before the road went in. Um, this is looking towards Old Town of Lees, um, Bewley Firth up here. Uh, the road comes round somewhere about there. Uh, this is 1989. Inverness in 1984, looking up towards Loch Ness. And you can see that big bulge round there, which, uh, which um, the river sort of meanders around. And that's where the West Link uh, went and crosses over somewhere I think about there. And finally uh, this is the Dramossi Hotel, the area of Inches and, old, uh, and Milton of Lees, the, the original houses that were built at Milton of Lees. And that's me.